Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be carrying two lenses that are very similar in their reach, but not very similar in their price point. So we're going to be looking at the 100-400, and we're going to be comparing that to the 200-400 f4, and seeing if it's worth spending the extra £3,000 on this lens here, or is it worth this using the 100-400? Well, as usual, what we'll do is we'll hop into some imagery taken on both lenses right now, and then we'll uh, talk afterwards about if I'd recommend going for this lens or this lens. So let's get right in there now. Okay, so the first image here we're going to look at. All these first three are from the 100 to 400, and this is a tiger here, tongue out. Um, nice little photo there, through glass. Um, this is at 400 mil, and nice and sharp where you need it to. Nice separation from the background, so everything colours really nice as well. So absolutely no problems at all with this image from here. Next image we look at here is of a crocodile. This is at 200 mil, so we've got a slightly better f-stop here than we would have if we'd gone at 400 mil, which means our nose is slightly out of focus because that's pointing slightly more towards us. Um, but again, focus on the eye, nice and sharp. You can see a reflection in the eye there. Um, nice separation from the background. I'd say nose snout, should I say more, is out of focus as well, just because of the positioning. But um, yeah, really nice colours and a nice sharp image where the focus points at. Last one here for the 100 to 400, I thought I'd use because this is at 400 mil and cropped in and in low light, and you can see still a very usable photo. Nice and sharp. Fur is really nice and and sort of draws out there. Eyes are nicely in focus too. And just shows that even at 400 mil, you're going to get a nice, clear, crisp image, and you can still crop with that image too. Now moving on to the 200 to 400, uh, I thought I'd start again with a another tiger. This one walking towards me, same enclosure, same light conditions, focused on the eyes, really nice and sharp. This is a f 5.6. I was running at 540 with the converter engaged. Let's say a very nice sharp image. Is why the nose is still in focus as well as the eyes. But great separation again, nice colouring, and a really nice image. Next image here is a mandrill, looking a bit sorry for itself, looking into the water. Um, this is a bright light shining towards the um, the camera. This is at 200 mil, and you see nice, nice sharp again, nice details, good separation, uh, and just a nice, sharp, emotional image here for you. And the final image here I thought it'd match up with the 100 to 400 as well is again a leopard low light. Um, you can see here though, this is a 200 mil f4, really nice and sharp where it needs to be with the eyes and everything like that. Again, great separation, nice colouring. Um, got the, the leopard almost looking at me, slightly looking to my right as I'm looking at it. Um, but great image, really nice and sharp. And this was at the boundaries of it being slightly too close. For the AFs, this is where if I had the 100 or 400, um, I could have been at 100 mil and probably got a little bit more, uh, the leopard a little bit closer to me. But this is the last image that was in focus that I could take just because of that minimum focus distance on the 200 to 400. So that's the imagery from both lenses. Obviously, there are some very slight differences. Major with both lenses, and I will link down in the description the initial videos of both these lenses that I did. Um, when I first got them, so you get a rundown of the specs of them and and what they um, they look like and everything like that. But the major things you've got to think of is one price point. You can pick up these for about twelve to fourteen hundred pounds in the UK, compared to one of these, which you're looking at between three and a half to four and a half thousand, or even now they still sell them brand new for thirteen and a half thousand pound. Now. If you're looking for the best bang for the buck, you will not be disappointed with 100 to 400. It's a very, very good, capable lens. The new time it is very much let down compared to the 200 to 400 is the fact it's a variable aperture. So you haven't got that f4 all the way through, so you can't shoot in quite as low um, light as you can with the um, 200 to 400. Now that's a limitation that not a lot of people are ever really going to find. Um, with most people, having a, a very hand-holdable lens is way more useful. Um, a very compact lens as well in comparison. Like if you look at the two together, like the difference is 
ridiculous and the weight as well this is three four times as heavy um so you have to shoot really you can shoot that handheld but you have to really shoot it with a monopod um the image quality on both as well is really good really usable um you say in the low light you'll you'll find you're having to shoot a, a lower iso so you will technically get a better sharper image from the 200 400 in very similar circumstances it is lower light and it is very useful having that 1.4 converter but is it worth four times the price of one of these no because you could just buy a 1.4 converter for one of these and pop it on there and there you are you you've got that versatility already but you are going to be shooting at that higher f-stop um i have that bigger lens because i think it pairs very well with the 1dx system so i enjoy using it with that not to say this doesn't work very well the 1dx system that just works incredibly well as well it has in my opinion a slightly sharper image than the 100 to 400 especially when you're shooting all the way through the range and even with that added converter on top as well you could put another 1.4 converter on here and run it all the time with 1.4 then flick on the additional 1.4 if you wanted to run as well and have an even greater reach um but i have that just because i like having that lower aperture and i like shooting at that lower aperture with some of the things i do especially with zoos when you're shooting through glass sometimes you want the lowest aperture possible to to stop from getting any um sort of blur and stuff if you're shooting at slight angles it's nice to have the lower aperture on there but even when i'm out shooting um in sort of wildlife situations having that lower aperture for the lower light suits me better but i have been using this lens a lot more for testing purposes and going out shooting with it and i've been incredibly happy with it yeah because it's got the 100 not the 200 at the end closest you can actually shoot very close up to subjects you've got a very short um focal distance from um, for there so i've been using this taking photos of bees and stuff like that it's very small insects which i could never do on the 200 to 400 just because the minimal focus distance is so much further away so i think for a good 80 to 90 percent of people the 100 to 400 is the way to go if you're a pro photographer you shoot a lot in low light um or you just have the money to, to go out and get it you're not going to be disappointed with the 200 to 400 that's an incredible lens but it's just a not as much as a jump that's worth spending the extra money in my opinion over the 100 to 400 which is just super super capable so i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe comment everything that you do down below as usual let me know have you got either one of these lenses let me know your thoughts do you think that you should always go for the 200 to 400 over the 100 to 400 um have you used both and and you again preferred the 100 to 400 over the 200 to 400 let me know down below the next video i'm hoping to get out will be the r6 mark ii video and so if you want to look out for that hit the bell icon you'll get notified when that video comes live and i will catch you in that next video have a good one and see you again soon goodbye